swans are so fat, pure and gentle. Come on, come on, swing to swans. The new white floating soap presents the Burns and Allen Show with Paul Whiteman. Our singer, Jimmy Cash, your old friend, Bill Goodwin, the Dick Pitts and the Myth, and the stars of our show, George Burns and Gracie Allen. And now to the Burns house where we find George and Gracie. Well, Gracie, isn't it nice to be back home again? Oh, yes. Everybody's been so sweet to us. Wasn't that a wonderful homecoming party our neighbors gave us last night? Say, that was quite a party. Yes, I love those games we played. Wasn't it a ride when they blindfolded me and I tried to pin the tail on the donkey? That's a panic, a panic. Oh, that reminds me, dear. Would you like another cushion under you? <laughs> uh, no, thanks. I heal pretty fast. Wasn't it fun when we took turns acting our famous events of history? They never did guess ours. No, they didn't at that. It was easy, too. The purchase of Manhattan Island from the Indians. I just stood there and you gave me $24. That's right. I can't understand why everybody thought it was Moses getting water out of a rock. (laughs) Well, neither can I. Are you sure you don't want another cushion, dear? No, what for? Well, you're sitting there tilted. I always sit that way. I would have enjoyed the party last night a lot more if you hadn't been so mean to me, though. I was mean to you? Well, when? remember when they wanted me to make a little speech because I was the guest of honor? Yeah. And I asked you to hold my plate of chicken salad and my cup of coffee? Well, I held them, didn't I? Well, yeah, but when I finished my speech, you were the only one who didn't applaud. <laughs> Gee, I'm a dog. Well, you, you never treated me that way before we were married. You used to be the sweetest, the most thoughtful man in the world. Every ten minutes, you tell me how beautiful I was. Well, don't I still do that? No. Uh, and you don't realize that a woman loves to be told she's beautiful. Even women who aren't beautiful love to be told they are. Oh, hello there, of course, I'm only guessing. <laughs> From now on, I'll tell you you're beautiful. Well, I should hope so. My goodness, it isn't as if I were asking you to lie to me. Of course not, of course not. <laughs> oh, now, you were cute when you courted me, though. You were so charming and so handsome. Of course, that was a long time ago. Naturally, naturally, yes. Uh, George. Yes? Uh, you remember our first date? Uh-huh. I was so excited. I was hoping you'd bring me flowers because Mama had such a lovely remembrance of her first date with Papa. He brought her flowers and she saved every one. She pressed them between the pages of a book. She did, huh? Uh-huh. You brought me chocolates, remember? Mm-hmm. Ma, I- I'd love to see them today. I wish I'd get that book open. <laughs> See, that box of chocolate certainly brings back memories. We just started keeping company then. Mm-hmm. I was in vaudeville playing Altoona. Yes. Right after the show, I'd rush back to New York to keep a date with you. I'd tell you all the jokes in the show, and you'd laugh and laugh. Yeah. You said I was a lot different from the people in Altoona. <laughs> well, I, I didn't bring them any chocolate. Oh. Uh-huh. Yes. Hey, every time I came to see you, that tall fellow would always be sitting there. What was his name? Uh, oh, that was Joe Spencer, your rival. Yeah, Joe Spencer, what a rival. Flappy ears, big buck teeth, and no chin. Yeah. For the longest time, I didn't know which one of you to marry. It's a nice TL for me. For uh, remember me. how shy and backward Joe was? He was so bashful. Mm-hmm. He's married now and got six children. Yeah, bashful, bashful, yeah. <laughs> oh, were you crazy about me in those days? Remember every time we went to a restaurant, you'd take your spoon and write, Roses are red, violets are blue, Gracie Allen, I love you, and the mashed potatoes. Well, you got bigger helpings in those days. Oh, gee, we had so much fun when you used to take me out on dates. But now how do you treat me? Just like I was married to you. But we are married. A preacher conducted a legal ceremony and pronounced us man and wife. Well, he certainly killed a beautiful friendship. <laughs> Yeah, we were buddies. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Playmates, all... Playmates. Yeah. Oh, yes. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all... You are my very dear friend. Yes, yes. Look, wouldn't it be wonderful if all married couples could recapture the thrill of their courtship? Well, it certainly would. Well, we can. How? Ask me for a date. Gracie, that's silly. Ah, oh, please, George. After all, when you asked me to do something nice for you once I married you, didn't I? <laughs> 
Gracie, married people don't ask for dates. Well, you're very mean, George. Look, I just asked you for I, a simple little thing. Well, Not uh, like I'm asking for a mink coat. Uh, okay. for bill or something okay, like that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll ask you for a date. Oh, all right. But you, uh, just like you used to, huh? Okay. <clears throat> Honey, what are you doing tonight? I'm busy. <laughs> you're, uh, you're busy? Sure. I'm popular. Well, I'm glad. Then you're going out with somebody oh, else. Oh, no, George, you didn't it, but... do it right now. You, you have to go out and come in like you were coming from Altoona. Like you used to, you know, full of jokes and everything. Look, Gracie, I'm a girl. Oh, now, George Burns, please. All right, all right, I'll do it. At least that Joe Spencer with the buck teeth won't be sitting here. Oh, I'm still jealous, huh? Well, anyway, dear, count to 50 before you come in. I want to crimp a little bit. All right. Do I bounce her if other husbands have to go through things like this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Hello, George. eleven. Hello, Bill. 12, 13, 14, 15. You going out? No, I'm coming back. 16, 17, 18, 19 from Altoona. 20, 21. George, have you gone crazy? No, 22, 23. You see, I'm not married to Gracie. I'm a boyfriend. 24, 25, Oh, well, that clears it up completely. 27, 28. I thought you'd catch on. Go right in. 29, 30. George. What? That's to you, 31, 32. <laughs> hmm. Wise guy. 33, 34, 35, 36. Oh, well, 49.50. Let us sue me. Why, look who's here, Josh Burns. Well, here I am, back from Altoona, full of jokes and full of pep. Well, come on in. And just look who's sitting on the sofa. I know, it's Bill Goodman. No, no, it's Joe Spencer. Oh, no. Say, what's going on? Gracie told me I'm supposed to be Joe Spencer, but who's he? Well, Joe Spencer and I used to be rivals for Gracie's hand. I guess you know who lost. Yeah, Gracie. <laughs> Very comical. He's screaming that Well, come on, George. Ask me for a date. Oh, all right. <clears throat> How about a date, baby? Well, Joe was here first, weren't you, Joe? Well, weren't you, Joe? Oh, oh, yeah, that's me, the rival. Uh, <clears throat> Gracie, don't go out with that broken-down comedian. Broken-down comedian? Why, I killed him in Altoona. They held me over for a second day. <laughs> Gracie, go out with me and we'll have a million laughs. Get this one. Do you know how to... Do you know how to make a Venetian blind? Yeah, stick your finger in his eye. Oh, he's so <laughs> sorry. Gracie, go out with me and I'll come over every night and help you wash the dishes. And with Swan, the new white floating soap that's a regular suds and whiz. The soap that suds faster than other floating soaps, even in hard water. Gracie, go out with me and you'll have a laugh a minute. Get this one. Do you know what fellow in the army wears the biggest hat? The fellow with the biggest head. <laughs> yeah. Gracie, go out with me and I'll show you how Swan helps you with every soap and water job in your house. And you'll find that Swan will help keep your hands beautiful, too, because it's as mild as the finest Castile soap, pure as an angel. Look, Gracie, I know a million gags. Get this for a buck. Did you hear the one about the absent-minded professor who got into his car, stepped on his wife, and kissed the starter goodbye? He's a screaming out to him. He's screaming. <laughs> Gracie, listen, go out with me and I'll show you how Swan breaks in two. So you can use half in the kitchen for your dishes and housework and the other half in the bathroom for your tub or shower. What do you say, Gracie? It is a date? Look, Gracie, I'm not going to keep this up all night. You're going out with me, or aren't you? Oh, well, yeah, it's hard to decide. Let me see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I think I'll go out with mo. <laughs> mo? Well, that's enough for Joe. Think I better blow. Well, don't forget to shut the door. Joe! Oh, go, go. <laughs> Gracie, what was that mole? Oh, nothing. I just made that up to get rid of Joe. Oh, I see. Well, anyway, George, now you and I can go out together. Yeah, that'll be swell. Oh, George, this is going to be so much fun. It'll be just like it used to be. Mm -hmm. We'll go to a movie. Yes. And then we'll go to a restaurant. Uh -huh. And then go dancing. Yeah, just like it used to be. And then... Oh, I almost forgot. Here's the money. Oh, just like it used Here's to be. Here's the money. This is Paul Whiteman. The boys and I have cooked up what we consider a rather tasty arrangement of serenade and blue. And it features the fine singing of Jimmy Cash. Jimmy, it's kind of up to you. When I hear that serenade in blue, I'm somewhere in another world alone with you, sharing all the joy we you know. Your face comes back to me Just like the 
dream of some forgotten melody in the album of my memory serenade in blue it seems like only yesterday a small cafe a crowded floor and as we dance the night away i hear you say forevermore and then the song became a sigh forevermore became goodbye but you remained in so wonderful. We're actually going to have a date, and we won't let on we're married at all. Huh? All right. We won't tell anybody we're married. No. Now go upstairs and get dressed. Oh, I feel so young. I feel just like I'm 17. <laughs> Gracie, you look like you're 17. And I feel like I'm 19. How do I look? Well, I'm going up to get dressed. <laughs> all right. I look like I'm 20. Anyone doesn't know this, but my heart in beside them. <laughs> Herman, she has to powder her nose. Would you like to have Mama put some powder on your nose? Oh, you love it. Hold still. Hold still now. <laughs> That's a good ducky. <laughs> well, most of it stayed on. Now settle down and go to sleep, darling. Mama's going out on a date tonight. What's the date? Well, that's what people go out on when they're courting. It's lots of fun. Well, of course, Duck can have dates. Some night you have a date with a pretty little girl, Duck, and you'll sit on her front porch for hours and hours. Oh. <laughs> and then you'll reach over and hold her wing. Oh. And she'll put her head on your shoulder and snuggle up real close, and you'll kiss her. Oh. <laughs> and then, then you'll tell her good night and go home. <laughs> you, you'll say good night and go home. <laughs> oh, honestly, Herman, there are times when I worry about you. <laughs> Gracie, aren't you ready yet? Coming, dear. Good night, Herman. Well, how do I look? Swell. But the seam in your stocking is crooked. Uh Uh-uh, George, you mustn't look at my ankles. We're not married, you know. (laughs) All right, we're not married. Let's go. Well, where do you want to go? Oh, well, now that's your problem. Mother always told me that when I had a date with a man, I should let him make all the decisions. I see. And she told me that I should do the same thing when I had a date with you. (laughs) <laughs> well, fine. All right, let's go bowling. Uh-uh. We'll go to a movie. The man makes all the decisions. Yes. Yes. Oh, you, Gracie. Oh, it's Mrs. Fowler. Hello, Francis. Oh, darling, I have the most amazing thing to tell you about Clara Bagley you ever heard in your life. You'll die. You'll absolutely perish. Oh, really? Uh, uh, you know George, don't you, Francis? Oh, yes, I met your husband. Well, now, you know, I'm the last one in the world to talk about anybody, Gracie. Oh, oh, George, George isn't my husband. We're not married, you know. But Clara Bagley's brother-in-law was in town last week, and without a doubt, he... You're not married. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. Foley. You see, you, uh, you don't understand. Well, I think I'm beginning to. Oh, well, you see, we're waiting for George to become of age. Well, (laughs) for heaven's sake, what age are you waiting for him to become? You see, we're only pretending. Pretending? All these years? Well, we're in no hurry. You know what I always say, rush in without fear and fools will tread on you, Angel. (laughs) Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's what she always says. Uh, Look, uh, Mrs. Fowler, uh, this was all Gracie's idea. That's right. Blame the woman, you cad. Goodbye. Mm. Cad? Now you've done it. Now that whole club of yours, they'll be going around and saying we're not married. Uh, I never believe anything they say anyway. (laughs) 
Oh, well, okay. Come on, let's go to the movies. All right, dear. Well, what do you want to do? Want to want to take a bus or want to walk? Oh, well, I'm your date judge. That's your problem. Oh, taxi! Oh, taxi! Taxi. <laughs> what an idea this Here, lady. Oh, yes. Uh, the Paramount Theater, please. Get in there. Oh, the silly things. Well, we're off. Isn't it thrilling, George? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, George. Yes? Not too so far away. Come on, let's cuddle. Gracie, let's not be silly. Oh, darling, you don't think young couples drive in taxis just to go places, do you? <laughs> no, I suppose not. Well, you can hold my hand if you like. Gee, thanks, kid. <laughs> don't squeeze it too hard. Remember, I hardly know you. All right, here's your handbag. Oh, I didn't want you to do that. <laughs> George, <laughs> would you uh, would you like to kiss me? Oh, now, Gracie, please, this is... Oh, I think if you wanted to, I'd let you. <laughs> Look, Gracie, this hey, is... Hey, Mac, you know something? What, driver? I've been in this racket 17 years, and this is the first time i ever seen a man put up the battle. <laughs> You mind your own business or just keep driving? Down the silly idea well, anyway. George, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> I feel so unmarried. <laughs> well, believe me, you acted too. Oh, stop the car. Stop the car. Stop the car? What the, what the, what, what's the matter? What happened? Well, look. Look at that beautiful dress in Magnum's window. Georgie. Oh, no. I can't buy it for you. You're only my date. And we're not married, you know. Georgie. What? How about a ten-minute furlough? Oh, no. <laughs> With six hits and a miss, we've made an arrangement of one of the most charming of the currently popular tunes. Be careful, it's my heart. Before you start, better 
better be careful because it's my heart. George and Jenkins, still reliving their courtship days, have left the movie theater and are strolling toward an ice cream parlor, just as they did on their first date together. George, when we go in, will you order the same thing tonight you ordered first on our first date? No. Oh, my, what a thrill I got when you said to the man, one vanilla soda with two straws, please. Oh, I, I, I couldn't order a thing like that now, Gracie. It would embarrass me to death. Well, you've got to. Everything must be exactly the same. Oh, but, Gracie, oh, I'm a... Oh, please, George. Well... All right, come on. Hello, folks. Sit right down here. Thanks. <laughs> A very funny thing. <laughs> Two of those silly high school kids were just sitting there. <laughs> what do you think they ordered? <laughs> One soda with two straws. <laughs> Did you ever hear of anything sillier? <laughs> oh, the whole time they were in here, I was trying to guess whether it was love or the 15 cents. <laughs> well, what would you folks like? Who? Us? Sure. Well, tell them what we'd like, George. Yeah, what do you want? Um, bring us a vanilla soda and two straws. Well, anyhow, with you, bud, I don't have to do any guessing. <laughs> oh, just get the soda, bud. Never mind the conversation. Okay, that was vanilla, wasn't it? Yeah, vanilla, vanilla. Oh, you know, we serve a scoop of ice cream in our soda. So what? Uh, so would you like two spoons, or will you wrestle her for that? <laughs> like, for two cents, I'd jump over that counter and search... Oh, now, George, you... remember, this is our first date. This is a wonderful idea of mine, isn't it? Sensational. No, honest, sweetheart, I wouldn't tell you that if I didn't mean it. Oh, Mr. Goodwin. Well, George, look who just came in. Oh, hello, George. Hello, Gracie. Hello. Hello. Come on, sit down with us, Bill. Hey, Bud, are these people friends of yours? Uh, well, what if they are? Just a minute, I'll get you two more straws. Oh, God, God, God. <laughs> Gee. George, Gracie, I, uh, I want you to meet my fiancé. What'd you say your name was, dear? <laughs> Nancy Byers. Fiancé? Why, Joe Spencer, I'm ashamed of you. Joe Spencer? Oh, you must be mistaken. Oh, no, I'm not. I know him. I know his wife and I know his six children. <laughs> his wife and his six children. Well, now, wait a minute, honey. I can explain. Never mind explaining. Joe Spencer, hmm? Why, this, this wolf here told me he was Bill Goodwin from the Swan Show. Well, but I am, honey, honest. Look, Swan is the new white floating soap that's a baby gentle whiz for suds. See? Oh, everybody knows that. Well, now, wait, wait, honey. I, I can tell you something about Swan that everybody doesn't know. Do you know that the Swan people will send you a swell encyclopedia, complete in one volume for only 25 cents in a Swan wrapper? They will? Yes. And not only that, this encyclopedia has exactly 832 pages, plus eight pages of maps in color. And do they know that Swan's encyclopedia covers 15,000 subjects? Why, that's more than a million words on everything from A to Z, including art, science, history, and geography. Would I know that if I weren't Bill Goodwin? Oh, I know that, and I'm not Bill Goodwin. <laughs> oh, yeah? But do you know that this encyclopedia contains a special March of Events section, a complete discussion of world events right up to September of this year? Hey, Bud, how can you get this book? Well, just send your 25 cents and a swan wrapper to Swan, Box 25, Racine, Wisconsin. Can anybody get one? Sure. Anybody who sends a quarter and a swan wrapper to Swan, Box 25, Racine, Wisconsin... Can your wife and six children get one? Oh, sure they can. All they have to do... <laughs> My wife? Now, wait a minute. Look, Nancy, let's leave it to George Burns. He'll tell you I'm Bill Goodwin. Well, I'd rather not get mixed up in this, Joe. You see, I... I, I... Joe! Don't... Don't... Don't you ever speak to me again! Oh. Now, look what you've done. Oh, so what, Bill? There are plenty of girls. Not like Nancy, George. She's different. She's the only girl I've met who isn't a riveter. <laughs> Nancy! 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 <laughs> That'll be 15 cents for the soda, bud. How much? 15 cents for the soda. Well, there you are. Hmm. 15 cents out of 15 cents. <laughs> Come on, Gracie, let's get out of here. Where would you like to go? Well, that's your problem, dear. You make it, work it out any way you like as long as we go for a walk in the park. Walk in the park? The park is a mile long. But it's so romantic. It's after 11. 
But there's a full moon. I'm too tired. Look, Daddy, you mind the fountain, I'll take oh, it. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Gracie, Gracie, we've been walking through this park for hours. Here come a boy and girl with their arm around each other. Isn't that sweet? Emily. Emily. Emily, the time has come when I must speak. I, I know I'm not worthy of you, Emily. Oh, I know I'm less than the dirt beneath your feet, but I, I can no longer remain silent. Tell me, Emily, I, I must know. Will you marry me? Will you, Emily? Will you, Emily? Oh, wasn't that a beautiful proposal, George? <laughs> It reminds me of the way you proposed to me. Did I say it like that? Well, certainly. Oh, you changed one or two words, but it was the same beautiful thought. Really? Uh-huh. You took one of my little hands in yours, and you looked in my eyes, and you said, Gracie, we've been in vaudeville now for two years, and it's costing me plenty for separate hotel rooms. Let's get married. <laughs> yeah, I was irresistible in those days. Let's sit down on this park bench. My feet are killing me. All right. George, you know what? What? You haven't kissed me all evening. Well, well, we... well, you know, it was on a park bench just like this that you first kissed me. Was it? Don't you remember how it happened? Well, not exactly. Well, I'll show you. You had your arm around me. Well, go ahead. Put it around. Okay. And then you asked me for a kiss, and I said no. And then you stole a kiss anyway. Oh, go ahead. Steal one. And then... Oh! Why, well, you almost broke my jaw. Oh, remember now? Oh, yeah, it all comes back to me. Come on, let's go home. I've had enough of this. Gee, I'm tired. Well, home at last. Uh-huh. It's been a most enjoyable evening, Mr. Burns. Or may I call you George? Call me George, call me Sam, call me anything. Let's go in the house. I'm tired. Well, good night. Good night? Oh, no, you can't come in. It's after 12. But, Gracie, I live here. Are you forgetting, dear? This is just a date. Well, where am I going to sleep? You made the date, George. That's your problem. Good night. <laughs> Well, I just told folks that you won't forget to send for your encyclopedia. On the level, it's the biggest quarter's worth I ever saw. And say, if your children have school homework to do, they'll find this encyclopedia a real help. So why not send for one tonight? Just send your quarter and swan wrapper to Swan Box 25, Racine, Wisconsin. That's Swan Box 25, Racine, Wisconsin. Do it tonight, huh? Remember, Swan now brings you two of radio's top shows, George Burns and Gracie Allen every Tuesday night, and Tommy Riggs and Betty Lou every Friday night on another network. And now till next week, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I swan, how about you? Good night. <laughs> <laughs>